guys welcome back to this channel and if it's your first time to come across this channel please support this channel by subscribing by the way don't forget to hit the notification bell it will be the only way that you'll be updated when i upload a new video returning subscribers thank you so much for coming back to this channel for the new subscribers thank you so much for subscribing by the way don't forget to give us a thumbs up don't forget to share it is the only way i'll be motivated to make more videos in today's video we are going to look at the the process and the total expenses of getting a security jobs in Qatar as a Uganda remember this was one of the questions that was asked me by one subscriber that was coming from Uganda bigger people coming from Uganda it was really great so we need to help one another we need to help our brothers and we need to help one another and this is the only platform where we need to share so in, we are going to look at the process and the total expenses of getting a security jobs in Qatar as the Ugandans we now going to start from what we call a scratch we're going to start from the start from the passport who, uh, from the person who does not have a passport remember when you think of traveling uh, most of us have the mind that comes when you to travel probably you, there are documents that you need to require and um, when you think of traveling itself to going to a foreign country you need to be prepared and what we mean is that first of passion you need to first prepare your brain and your mind that I'm, I'm going to travel this is what i need and uh, there are brothers and sisters that are out there that are a little bit stranded they do not know what to do they do not know where to start from tune into this video we try to share out and see if there's somewhere you are stuck probably you will get you will try to get a clear picture and you know what you're supposed to have and what you're supposed to have generally we are not only going to consider qatar but we shall also tap a little bit of other gulf countries like dubai abu dhabi and um we look at other countries like uh, Kuwait and, and Oman, if probably that allows. So in today's video, we are going to see. So we are looking at a person that is starting from the scratch, which is actually very important. First of all, you need to have a mindset centered to what you want. What do you want as a person is quite very important. Yes, are you going for security? Are you ready to take on the opportunity? That is one thing that you should have in mind. So. As you think about it definitely that means you need to be prepared one the one number one document that you need to have is what you call a passport you need to have a passport for yourself because it is the one that is going to enable you to travel to get to another country or to cross to another foreign country remember a person a passport what you call a passport itself is going to identify you as a person so when we look at the cost of a passport in Uganda uh, when you're going to have what you call an ordinary passport, you definitely you, know, you need to part with uh, 2,000 to 250,000 uh, Ugandan shilling if you're going to have a passport. Leave alone the other side that I'm going to get express passport, uh, I'm going to get um, uh, express passport where you need to pay more money. But we are looking at a person who is preparing himself or herself to travel and he knows he's going to travel. So they always say the early, the, the early bird catches the worm and you always have to be faster. Before you plan something, you need to plan a little bit earlier for you. So. The first document is the passport. And remember, a passport in Uganda costs 250,000 Ugandan shilling. Then, if you're going to use what we call recruitment companies or recruitment agencies, remember, most of these companies or most of these sponsors we have in the Gulf countries, they so much use what we call recruitment agencies they have their partner recruitment agents that they use so remember for you to go to that recruitment agency first they will need what you call registration fees and depending on where you go and what time some the registration fees in some recruitment agencies we take an average that lies between 100,000 to 200,000 Ugandan shillings so that is the equivalent on average. It may be 100,000 uh, Ugandan shilling or 1,500,000 uh, Ugandan shilling or even to the maximum of 200,000 uh, 2,000 200 of uh, 200,000 uh, 
Ugandan shilling. So that is probably what you need to have. The registration fee in that recruitment office that you need to go. Hope you're taking what I'm trying to say. Then, sometime, when we come to what you call recruitment commissions, the, that is the amount of money that you're supposed to pay that recruitment agency. And remember, when we talk to that, when you talk about that recruitment agency we're going to pay, they have different amount of fees. Remember, we take an average from 3 million Ugandan shillings to 7 million Ugandan shillings. Why am I saying like that? Because this recruitment commission for the recruitment offices is going to depend on where you are going, what job you're going to do, and what position you're going to take. Which country? That is where it depends. You find that a person who is going to Qatar right now, a person who is coming to Qatar right now, he takes an average of 3.5 million or even 4 million to take a security job in Qatar. For a person who is going to Dubai, it will be a little bit different or a little bit higher. Why? Because when you go to Dubai, still you have to take what you call the CIRA or PCDB uh, uh, training license. You need to have a training license. So meaning that the company that is taking you or the company you sponsor will have to put in an extra amount of money for your training. Then when it comes to Abu Dhabi, it's also going to be a little bit higher because on the average, the last average, uh, average you can have 7 million, 7 million you can shilling as your input or what you call as the commission for is for the recruitment agencies. Why? Because even the salary that you're going to earn on that particular position or that particular role also will also determine how much the recruitment offices are going to charge for you. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. Then remember that we also look at what you call medical fees. Remember before you travel to Qatar or before you travel to any Gulf country, you need to first do medicals in your own country. And we are taking an average of the medical in that country that will lie between 100,000 to 200,000 Ugandan children. What are we talking about? It is the medical we are talking about. We are talking about taking a yellow fever vaccine. We are talking about taking a blood sample if you have HIV and any other related diseases or syphilis for ladies and any other diseases. Then we are also looking at what we call the X-ray. We are talking about what we call the X-ray chest. They will need to take that X-ray. Why are these? They are looking for stresses of TB. If you've ever suffered from TB and you might have suffered from it and healed all your medication well and good. That is a very great idea. But before even you think of travel, first think of your health because you'll get disappointed as you come to this country. They'll do what you call medical fitness test. And when you prove you are unfit, you are medically unfit, they will definitely have to deport you back to your country. So for the medical fees, we take an average of 100,000 to 200,000. Then we have another one that is called the police police clearing, uh, police clearance, or what you call the Interpol, Interpol letter that shows that you don't have any crime or you've never associated yourself in any crime or whatsoever in your country. So in Uganda, the police clearance will take an average of um, 76,000, 76,000 to 100,000 Ugandan children. Why am I saying that? that? Because if the letter itself, you getting that letter is 76,000, then also include the bank charges, it may be 2,500, two, two, then also we are also taking an average, including the transport cost to and fro where you are going. So probably we take an average of 17, uh, 76,000 Ugandan shilling to 100,000 shilling, including the bank charges and other meridians. Uh, uh, fees or requirements that you're supposed to pay. Then, if, for example, at this time you still have what you call PCR testing or what you call negative PCR testing, that is also if it is part of your travel requ requirement and it's mandatory right now, which some of the airports still have to, you still have to test what you call, uh, you still have to have what you call negative testing or negative test requirement before you can board or you can travel with any airline. So let us take an average of uh, 180,000 to 300 uh, Ugandan shilling. Meaning that 
we take an average that if you are going to do a PCR test, uh, the amount of money you're going to spend is going to be relatively between that amount. Between 180,000 to 300,000 um, uh, Ugandan shilling. So you be ready to have that between that amount of money for you to take what you call a COVID-19 PCR test. Yes, well and good if you have a vaccination certificate or if you have a certificate, vaccination certificate is well and good to some countries like Dubai or UAE, they are open if you are fully vaccinated and you are vaccinated from those other vaccines that we are approved by the ministry or approved by the UAE government, then probably you do not need what you call a PCR test. You will probably have to present what you call a, a COVID certificate or COVID-19 certificate of a fully vaccinated person with a QR code, then probably you will have to move on to go on free. Then another one is that uh, uh, we look at what you call airport. Uh, Sometimes we call it airport clearance. This is quite very interesting. To some airports, like especially Uganda, uh, definitely if you're thinking of how you're going to sneak out of the country, how you're going to go out of the country, to make everything easier, uh, you find some recruitment agencies or some agencies that will ask for what you call um, uh, airport clearance. Uh, that is one way of making things very fast, and immigration very fast. So imagine, or oh, what I would say that most of the time, this policy clearance is not determined by the government, but it is a personal appreciation or a personal intoxication that you want to go very fast or bypass a little bit of system. So, as you're trying to calculate or trying to count, calculate how much you need to travel out to Qatar to come and do the security job or any other job, then probably you need to know that you need to have that money sit with you aside because they will ask for it as one way to tap you up and get off. So, I took an average that let's assume that. An average is between 200,000 to 300,000. That, that is an average. If someone is going to ask you, should ask you between amount that should not go beyond 300,000. Are you going to shilling? And she is not, this person is not going to go beyond uh, 200,000. Are you going to shilling? You definitely know what I'm talking about. So that is how much, or that is really how you can try to divide it. So as you are planning to come to these countries and you know you need this amount of much, your amount of money, it's better to prepare early in advance, such that by the time you have it, everything will freely move and everything will move slowly or very fast without even delay. But remember, to some situations, some instances, most of these sponsors or most of these companies sponsoring, they will give you what you call a visa. They will definitely send you a visa, or they may send you a visa and a ticket. Or they may send you a visa and you have to buy for yourself a ticket that will enable you to go to that or to, to come to this country. But if you find that well and good, then probably uh, you have to, to have what you call, they will give you both of them the visa and the ticket. But remember, for a country like Uganda, I think the most way to, 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 to get that, that, that heart very fast is that you use what you call recruitment agencies or you can use for Qatar uh, for the visa visa. It's a little bit very hard and complicated system. So the easiest way to come to Qatar if you want to come as a security guard, and there's an, a, there's a company that is recruiting, it is probably the only way that you can have that opportunity and come into the country to try to, to make a living or to try to put bread on the plate. Hope I've tried to share with you. Uh, thank you so much for coming back to this channel and thank you so much for subscribing. Please support this channel by giving me a thumbs up. It's the only way I'll be motivated to make more video and to make more content for you. Um, don't, forget, don't forget my name is Max from The Next Creation. Thank you so much. If you feel this video is very important, give it up a thumbs up and subscribe, uh, share. I'll always be more than happy. Put a comment in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to get back to you. As we try to improve ourselves or as we try to see that we can move from one stage to another. See you again in the next video.